Hello everyone and welcome back to DLC. My name is Connor and today we are back and talking about one of the weirdest and best indie franchises to come out with the new generation of gaming. That of course is Bug Snacks. Followers of the channel may know me from my Bug Snacks impressions video that I did early last year, where I did impressions of every single Bug Snack in the game, plus some of the male villager characters. It's still my most popular video on the channel, and I still can't thank you guys enough for that. It has been exhilarating seeing the awesome reception to it. If you haven't seen that video, you're going to want to go and watch that one first before you come back to this one. The link for that will either be up here or, or down there, wherever, wherever it happens. So recently, Bugsnack just got a huge free update called the Isle of Big Snacks. This update was a free add-on that included an entirely new biome to explore over the course of the game. The theme was obviously the super-sized bug snacks that inhabit this particular island. It's basically that episode of early Pokemon where they get stranded on that island of giant Pokemon, except in this case, they're not just giant robots in a Jurassic Park setting, it's just bigger bug snacks. With this update, they of course added a small group of new bug snacks, all of which I intend on doing impressions of today. But because there aren't that many new bug snacks, I figured I would also make this video a review of the DLC content just so you guys can get a taste of the new DLC. So before we get started, I would just kindly ask that you guys please hit the subscribe button and like the video. I would love to do more YouTube content on a consistent basis and knowing that there are people out there who like my content would be extremely encouraging. Just so you are aware, there will be spoilers for the entirety of the DLC and potentially some full game spoilers as well. I should also mention that the voices for some of the snacks are different depending on their current size in game, bigger being deeper, so I'll try to cover both sides as much as possible. I also forgot to mention that I have the official Bunger and Strawby plushes designed by the game's developers. And they are adorable, and I love having them in my setup. Strawby! And with that, let's get started! The Isle of Big Snacks starts off with meeting Chanlo and Snorpy in Simmering Springs, only to experience a massive island suddenly surface right off the coast. After gathering a few of our fellow Grumpuses, we sail over to the island to begin our research. We encounter a massive Bunger, properly named Bunger Royale, that yeets Chanlo into a frickin' rock wall. Oh my god! Bunger! Bunger? Bunger! Bunga 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 bung bung bung. So our first introduction to Big Snacks is basically a Big Mac. We discover a method of shrinking the snacks to make them catchable, and the adventure begins. As we research the island, we discover a bunch of new giant-sized bug snacks. First up, there's a giant cheese ball named Chedorb. Chedorb, 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 Chedorb. By the way, I had never heard of a cheese ball before this. Of course, I know the unhealthy cheese ball snack that you would get at, you know, kids' birthday parties, but I had never seen this before. It's just a giant ball of cheese covered in, like, toppings and nuts and stuff like that, and they use it as a weird dip. How have I never seen this before? Next up is Milly Mochi, the mochi-flavored millipede, and the bane of my existence in the DLC. I need this thing to go away. Milly Mochi, Milly Mochi, Milly Mochi, Milly Mochi, Milly Milly Mochi, Milly Milly Mochi, Milly 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 Mochi, Milly Mochi. Next, the most terrifying addition, Spaghetti. Can you guess what it is? Spaghetti. Next up is the cute Clobsteroni, a giant mac and cheese lobster. Lobster mac and cheese sounds real good right now. Clobsteroni, 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 Clob, Clob. Club, club, staroni. Club, club, staroni. Next up is Takeda Masala. It's a cicada based on the Indian dish Tikka Masala. Don't even want to imagine how spicy that is. Takeda Masala. Takeda Masala. Takeda Masala. Takeda Masala. Masala. Up next is Pilobite. It's a pie. That's it. Pilobite. 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 
Halibai. 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 Next is Chocolant. It's a little Hershey Kiss shaped ant. Chocolate, 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 chocolate. Next is stick bug. Just kidding, but this is celery sticks. A stick bug made to look like celery. It even carries little chocolates on its back. Celery stick, celery sticks. Sully sticks, Sully sticks, Sully sticks, Sully sticks. Next up, there's Deviled Eggler. Deviled eggs are the best. But this freaking thing can fly, so it's terrifying. Egg, 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 eggler. Egg, 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 eggler. Egg, 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 eggler. Eggler. Deviled eggler. Deviled eggler. Deviled eggler. And finally, we have the mighty boss of the Isle of Big Snacks, the Cheddar Bordel Rex. This thing is basically a giant cutting board stacked with cheese and crackers. Also, its legs are cheese cutting knives, so that's terrifying. Cheddar Bordel Rex. Cheddar Bordel. Cheddar Bordel Rex. Cheddar Bordel. Cheddar Bordel Rex. Cheddar Bordel. Cheddar Bordel Rex. Cheddar Bordel Rex. And that's it for the, wait, the lore. You may think that a boss fight against a giant cheese platter would have been it for this DLC, but nope. Young Horses took the chance to add even more to the lore and mysteries of this world. As you open some of the mysterious temple doors around the island, eventually you'll find a strange triangle-laden key. This key is mysterious until you return to Snacksburg and receive a letter from an unknown person explaining the key is for unlocking a secret section of the map. I'm ashamed to say it took me way longer to find this area based on the clues than it should have. Anyway, opening this brings us to the Triplicate Space, a mysterious triangular temple filled to the brim with new lore. We are introduced to Alligander Jamfoot, a mysterious researcher of bug snacks and part of an organization called the Snackalites. I am Alligander Jamfoot. Junior Archivist and crypto Snackological Researcher. That is my passion. Anyway, I am also a part-time barista. I was sent here by my organization to monitor this triangular relic. A position of honor, I was told. But I hold no illusions. This is a punishment. I'll leave the rest of the lore up for you guys to experience, and for MatPat to please do a theory on. Calling you out, Game Theory. After completing some puzzles, we enter the final room, only to be greeted by a brand new bug snack, Cappuccino. This little cappuccino <laughs> sprints faster than any snacks before. It avoids your traps, and if you startle it, it runs to an entirely different random section of snack tooth. I didn't startle it. No, I didn't startle it. Seriously, it was completely accidental when I caught this damn thing. Back. I, oh, oh, I got him, I got him, I got him. Oh my God, I don't know what hit him. I don't know what hit him. And those are the new bug snacks. The DLC was a pretty solid addition to the full game. It may have been a better experience playing it alongside the game for the first time through though. The new side quests and errands you have to do are extremely tedious if you've already done everything in the game before. Doing mini fetch quest missions gets very boring after a while but if you do them throughout your first playthrough, they're likely a better experience. A pain in the butt for completion though. The new hats you can put on captured snacks are cute, and the way of getting them is thankfully very simplified due to their spawns being noted on the board on Gramble's barn, but otherwise, it's a fairly mediocre collectible. The DLC does add more to the surprising adult storytelling of bug snacks with all the characters' backstories, their worries, their motivations, which was always a nice touch. Overall, the DLC was a nice addition, but better suited for first-time players rather than returning completionists. Although, I'll enjoy Bugsnax no matter how far that cappuccino freaking runs from me. 
that little cappuccino mother and that's it thank you guys so much for watching the video please make sure to leave a like and comment what your favorite new supersized bug snack is or your theories about the lore and please make sure to subscribe so i can make more content for you guys in the future i really like doing all sorts of content like impressions let's plays or discussions this was a new type of video for me that I worked really hard on, so I really appreciate the support, guys. Also, please make sure to follow me on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash downloadableconnor, which you can find in the link below. Same name, same guy, same thing. We just play lots of random games on there, whatever we feel like playing. It's a very chill place. We play all sorts of games like Kirby, Horizon, Bug Snacks. Right now we're playing Bloodborne and much more to come. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.